Hello and welcome to my channel. In this week's video I'm going to be doing these two penguins and those of you who are regular to my channel will know that I do use a website called Pixabay quite often to get my reference photographs. So this one caught my eye on there but I think now and again we need to think about perhaps altering the composition of photographs that we use in our artworks. So when I found, saw this I thought it's really really cute. You just see sort of one fin of each of them and they're waddling along the sand there. But I thought it would be rather cute if they were facing each other rather than facing away from each other. So what I'm going to do is carefully cut round each one. And I'm actually going to keep the shadow on there as well. So cut all the way around him, him or her, I'm not sure which. And if you do know what sort of penguins these are you could let me know because I haven't got a clue. I'm not familiar with penguin varieties. So again if we go around the shadow there. and we can get rid of the rest of that photograph. So as you remember they were like that, facing away from each other and I thought it would be quite nice to face them towards each other. As if they're looking at each other a little bit more. That one's slightly bigger so if we think about it as they were like that we want the same distance between the feet to give that sense of depth. So if we swap them over we don't want to be moving him too much in a line and to keep them about there somewhere. And I'm going to stick those down with a little bit of masking tape so that we've altered that composition. Now as you can see I've gone actually over the shadow there so we're going to have to remember that, that there's going to be a shadow going behind him. You could of course reduce the size of him and make them both a similar size and put them next to each other. So it's just to make you think really that you don't always have to just go with what the photograph is there doing. Okay, so we've now got them both facing in the same direction as if they like each other a little bit more. And we're going to go ahead and draw that. So I'm going to do some pencil guidelines first and then I'm going to fill it in with some of the Derwent ink tents. The paper that I'm using today is the Faber-Castell one and it's a mixed media pad um, and it's an A4 250 gram paper. Now this one is really nice and smooth so it's nice to draw on. And as you can see it's a lovely crisp white and I've, you may see there I've taped it down at the edges just to stop it curling up if we add any water to that. So I'll pop my penguins up there so I can see what I'm doing and of course I will link this reference photograph down below. So to begin with we need to position the two penguins so just sort of think about the height, pop in a little line where the top of his head is and the bottom of his feet. And then if you look at the next one to him, his head sort of part way up his tummy there in line with that and then down to about here somewhere. So he's quite a bit bigger. I think he's both nearer to us and bigger. Um, so perhaps there's one female and one male, I'm not entirely sure. So carefully look at them and see in proportion what they're like. So if you look at his complete length and then you look at his width, his width's about a third of his length there, so that gives you an idea of how fat to make him. So you can sort of put um, a bit of an oblong shape there to begin with, something to fit him into. And again do the same with this one, although this one's actually facing slightly to the side. So just basically put a couple of oblongs there to begin with for something to work to and then start and position the heads. So the head with this one is sort of coming this way and you've really got to look carefully when it's something that you're not familiar with. You know we don't have many penguins here in Cumbria so it's obviously something that I'm not familiar with so it makes you look more and have a bit of a more of a think about where things are going. So as, as I'm coming down here now I'm thinking well actually I can see a bone here and I can tell that there's sort of what we would call, call perhaps a shoulder bone there. It won't be a shoulder bone because it's obviously a wing rather than a shoulder. And look at that nice flowing line, the way it goes down and think about the again looking at the width compared to the length and fitting all those parts in. Not sure I've got the beak coming far, far enough across, it's a quite a funny shaped 
beak and again it's quite a small photograph to work from we're not seeing masses of detail there I've actually ended up making him a little bit longer than he should be perhaps or maybe not that's down to where his tummy came to and look at how his legs are attached you can see that line going across there and then obviously some of those feathers come part way down his leg so I'm just sort of thinking out loud really as I'm doing this because like I say I'm not familiar with a penguin or what type it is or anything like that so it's just looking and observing and you may find you need to alter things considerably when you're doing something like this that you don't quite know where the anatomy is really this foot's a little bit further back so we've got a gap between one foot and the next and then we've got that shadow that I talked about underneath there so just sort of indicate a little bit where the shadow is with your pencil so I'm looking at him now, it doesn't look quite long enough um, I think maybe part of that is here his head needs to come up slightly more and I think maybe in places is a little too fat maybe his arm again is a little bit too fat as well so just keep looking back and seeing where you think you maybe need to alter things but at the same time don't fuss too much because this picture is not going to be, this photograph is not going to be in front of whoever's looking at your artwork later. So I'm just going to get my eraser and I'll just take out one or two of those lines where I've gone, made him too fat there. And his, that looks better already. And actually one of the things is we've got this leg too wide. That leg comes to about there somewhere, which in turn makes his tummy more obvious. And that goes up there because if you think about a bird, it's got that breastbone, hasn't it? If you think about when you're cooking a chicken or anything, you've got that very deliberate dent there where that breastbone comes to. And he's got more of an ankle than you might imagine as well. But we can put the detail in a little bit more afterwards with the ink tense. And just see a tiny bit of his tail there. And if we look, we can see that this part of his chin, his um, neck, is actually coming down here. Because again, his head's slightly tilted to one side. So making that continue down there is going to alter his shape a little bit as well. And if we move on to the other guy, first of all, we'll do his tummy, which is a nice big sweep all the way down. And then you can see this leg here. funny little feet like in a web with the claws on the end there again it looks like he's got some trousers on he's got quite a chunky bit of orange ankle showing make sure that, that little gap between one foot and the next get his wing in the right place the wings seem to set off quite a long way down So it's comparing measurements to each other, seeing where things line up. You know, if you go up from the ankle to the wing, you can see that's in line. And then he's got rather a fancy tail, um, sort of a triangle shape with it all spanning out. I'm wondering now if I've made him a little bit chunky. I do tend to put more weight onto things. I've got that line a bit far down. And his beak sort of more upturned and got that very definite sort of snooty upright look to it. His eye there and his... Actually, I've made him look a bit grumpy now, haven't I? I think perhaps that comes in a bit and he's a little bit slimmer than I've got him with his arm coming more that way. Like I say, I've made him look rather grumpy. So I don't think that's bad in general, um, getting those shapes in. So I think now I'll go ahead and do an ink line on top of this and then I'm going to rub that out and then I'll come back and do it in ink, Derwent Ink Tense.
Okay, so I should say that the pen I used there was a size 0.5 and that's a Unipin fine liner. Of course you don't have to do an ink drawing, you could just leave it in pencil if you wanted to. The good thing about doing it in pencil first and then in ink when it's an unfamiliar subject to you is it gives you that opportunity to look at the subject twice and notice things that you didn't notice the first time around, which you will always do. Particularly when you've got areas on the animals that are black, you don't always see where the line of the actual body and the skeleton and everything is there underneath. So have a bit of a think about that. Actually I'm looking at it now and I'm realising I've not actually got this wing quite long enough. I'm just going to extend that a little bit. So it's not perfect but it's a cute little picture but they actually look quite grumpy don't they? It's very difficult to get them looking like the smiley because on the pictures themselves they look a little bit on the on the grumpy side the way that the beak goes down like that. So hopefully we'll get a make them a bit more cheerful with some colours in. They do look like they're wearing little trousers where the feathers come down to here and then they've got these orange ankles. So uh, quite amusing little things really. Now on the original photograph they're actually stood on the beach and we've got a very grey colour here of the sand and the water. I thought it'd be much nicer to have them looking as if they're on snow so I'm just going to leave it very crisp white because it's a lovely crisp white paper. So I'm just going to colour the penguins themselves and the shadow. I'm not going to do anything else behind them. So to use some colour I'm going to use the Derwent Ink Tense Blocks. I know some of you may have these. Don't worry if you haven't, you could do it in anything you want. You could use inks or you could use your watercolours or some crayons. So you don't have to do exactly the same as I am. But I'm going to use these Derwent Blocks. And when I'm using these and I'm doing something so small as this, I just use a tiny little palette like that. That's enough um, colour. So I'm going to begin with those shadows and make a bit of a shadow colour. I'm just going to pick up some of the grey that we've got in here that's quite a nice colour and just to make it a bit warmer I'll pop a little bit of yellow or something in there maybe a little touch of red actually just make a bit of a warmer colour and then a little bit more water and touch more of the red and that's a nice warm grey there for the shadows. So like I said about this one, his shadow was sort of disappearing. There's a shadow there from his tail and then here from his feet. And then it's going to be going back behind his friend here. So you need to touch his friend there with the shadow. And don't forget with shadows, they're touching the object that they're casting from as well. Don't obsess too much about the shape of the shadow, it's just to give that impression of it being there. So he's got a shadow in between his feet, cast from that foot, and some underneath the foot as well, of course. If you want to be more precise, you could use a slightly smaller brush. His shadow goes off in this direction with a very striking point of his tail, and then this is obviously the shadow of the rest of him here. And that's enough. So that's all we're going to be putting on there. Now with that same colour, I'm going to add some water to that. Make it nice and loose and watery. And again, I think I'm going to add a tiny touch more of that red. And when I say I'm adding red, I'm literally adding a dash. You can't really see it in there, but it's just making it warmer. And of course, they're a tubular shape. They're a, you know, they're a column. They're, they're a animal that's going around, they're not just flat, so they're going to be casting shadows. And We've got this shadow all the way down this side on this guy. So it's not going to be quite white. And in some places it's even darker, so we'll come on over the top with a second layer in a moment when this has dried. But just look carefully at where it's most in shade. Obviously where is, I was going to say hip bone, I don't know what sort of bone it is, but you know what I mean. It's um, You've got those areas casting shadows on himself. If we just left him all white, although we know that that area is white compared to his black feathers, 
it wouldn't look as natural. So we'll just leave that to dry a tiny minute whilst we do the other one. He's got this shape round here um, where it's, I don't know, I suppose he's gullet. It's going to make him look a little bit more 3D getting those shadows right in there. The sun's catching down one side of his leg there and the same here. So just carefully observe. They're not very striking shadows, they're not very dark but they're there and they need to be in. Okay, while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to mix up this dark colour. So in the ink tents, we do have a black, so let's just have a see what that looks like. But it's quite a brown black. I don't know if you can see that. I think to make it a nicer colour, or a more interesting colour perhaps, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it. So I'll just add a tiny touch of a blue. I'm not sure which what the name of this blue is, but it's one that's kind of cobalty, and it's just going to make a richer colour than just the black on its own. And a tiny touch more water. So now I'm going to look at where the actual markings are, and we've got a marking right on the end of his. I keep saying arm flipper, but it's actually a wing, isn't it? Really, it's a wing, and here. So just looking at where the markings are, you can actually see a little bit there and then of course his tail is black. So because we've got all that water in, it's still quite transparent so it's not covering up those ink lines. You can still see the drawing coming through where we've got all that shape around his eye and his beak and everything. And he's got that little white patch there left on his on the top of his head. If we go across here, you can see that his beak's got some black on as well. And then underneath. And that's a very distinct straight line across there, top there. So they're starting to look a, a bit more penguiny now that we've got that shape in. And if we look at him, we've got the same thing going on again. He's got black on his beak there, on his head here. And then we're leaving that white mark there which is more or less a triangular type shape really. And then underneath and around the eye even. So just keep carefully looking back at your photograph and seeing where these lines come to. And if you have gone wrong with your drawing you can of course correct it at this stage with your ink tents. So here we've got two things going on. We've got the actual colouring, the shapes, going behind his wing and also the wing itself is black. So there's one or two areas on there that you need to leave white but not too many. And then of course his tail's black. So we've got all this behind here is black. Some of that's tail and some of it's the rest of his body actually. You'll have time to be more precise than me if you want to be. Again, we've got some black coming down here and around. So for something like a little illustration like this, these derwents are really handy because you don't need a lot of pigment there. You don't need to be taking a lot out onto your palette. They last for a long time. It just gives you that little bit of colour. So I'm just popping on there. Um, I don't know what you call them. Claws. Now that that first layer of shadow colour is dry, we can add some more. So just look at where it's even darker and just put a few extra lines in. But at this stage, don't overdo it. You don't have to perhaps go quite as dark as it is on the picture because we want to make it a little cheerful illustration. We don't want it to be too heavy. but it's just going to give them a little bit more shape. This one here has got more shadow on him because he's a bit of a chunkier guy and he's got to one side to the sun obviously and we've got quite a lot of shadow under here and around here from his 
wing and his chubby tummy there. But I think that's probably enough. It's given them a little bit of shape and left some nice white areas as well. So the other colours that we need to add now are this lovely orange and it's pretty much the same orange in his beak that's in his feet and I'm just going to use that straight from the Inktense block there and I think we don't need to add anything to that really nice and bright I mean actually in some places it's a little bit darker we might put some shadow over the top afterwards but to begin with I think we'll just add that orange as it is so this foot here is in shadow because it's right underneath him I've just gone a little bit over the line there I'm just going to tidy that up so with a dry brush just tidying that up whilst it's still still wet but of course the good, other good thing about doing uh, ink tense blocks is you can go over the top of them with another colour if you wanted to and just that little touch of colour into his beak has made all the difference made him a bit more lively And if we look now, the I'm just going to put some. Sorry, I'm just going to put some of that into there with a little bit of this shadow colour, because we've got a little touch of orange on the underside of these wings in the shadow. I don't know if it's because it's grubby or I'm not entirely sure what, but I'll just show you. You see a bit of a sandy colour here. Maybe it's the skin showing through, but that just wants to be a bit warmer than the rest of the colours there. So I've just popped that on. And I'll just tease that around a bit with a damp brush and let that flow into the rest of that shadow there. Still not happy here that this has come outside the line. I'm going to try and get some of that off. Just by drying this, it'll stop it going any further. So I do think we need this orange to be a bit thicker in places and I'm going to add some yellow to it as well. To make a slightly different colour and slightly thicker, give it a bit more definition in one or two areas, but not over the whole area. Slightly darker down one side of the foot than the other. slightly brighter in places so we're just not necessarily going it completely from the photograph now just making a cheerful little picture so I feel actually I would like some yellowing just to brighten the whole thing up a bit so that yellow that I just mixed there I'm going to add a little bit with plenty of water. I wouldn't advise you to mix your paints over the top of your painting like I'm doing by the way, that's perhaps not a good idea. And I'm just going to look now where the sun's ca perhaps catching and can you see how faint that yellow is because I've got so much water in there but it's just going to liven the whole thing up a little bit just where the sun's maybe catching him down one side and this one the sun's catching him on his tummy there and down the front of this leg so it's just going to make it a little bit more cheerful and adds another colour to the picture altogether. And just to finish off, I'm going to get a little bit more of that black. Again, make it nice and thick with the same blue that we had before. Add a bit more of the blue in to make that nice rich colour. And I'm just going to go a bit darker in one or two areas, especially under his chin here where it's a bit more shadowy. Just make it more black and less grey looking. I'm doing a good job of going over the lines today. I've gone over there and can you see also I've gone into that yellow. So that was me being too hasty, allowing that to bleed there. So I'll put my palette down to one side and try and concentrate a little bit more. Just look at where it's the absolute darkest. I mean all of this is black. 
but just by getting some extra dark in here and there you're going to build the shape up a bit more of his wing and try and sort of define between his wing and his body there and this is really dark on the tip of his wing here so do the same on both of those I think I've not got that coming far enough down that little um, area there. It maybe looks better. Okay, so now I'm fiddling and making things worse. So that's a good lesson for you to leave things. So maybe leave it to dry and if there's anything you want to alter come back to it at this stage once it's dry but I think I'm probably going to leave it at that I think it's quite a cute little picture just as it is I'll just dry that little bit under there to stop that bleeding any further and like I said the great thing about ink tents is you can alter things and come back on top if you want to Okay, so I hope you found that useful. I mean, the main thing really for me to say was think about altering the composition of photographs that you use from the internet or wherever, or even your own photographs. Don't think about slavishly copying them all the time, doing it exactly as it is. Change things to make what you want to make. And I, I rather like the fact that they're now looking at each other instead of looking away from each other. So I hope you found that useful. I'll be back again next Thursday with another tutorial. I have just done another um, Skillshare tutorial on painting snow. So if you're interested in that, I will put the link down below to my latest Skillshare um, tutorial and I'll hopefully get another one out in December because we will be very shortly in December and I'm not entirely sure where the time's going at the moment but um, I will get another one out as soon as I can. Okay so all that's linked down below in the description. So thank you very much for joining me, enjoy your painting and drawing this weekend and bye for now.